It's poem time. Okay, I think I picked the most duty words. Aw oh, man, I lost one here again. Actually, the first one, because no one's here. There's no one, it's just me. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Oh, there you are. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah, <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't have been here if it wasn't all for you. For all of you. And I'm super happy that we're all writing, all willing to help out the, for the festival too. Uh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Wouldn't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where you get to play and eat all the kinds of delicious food. You sound a little bit say, like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Ah, uh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Huh? I didn't say like that. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Cause... It's an idea in your name. Mon Ika. I think Ika in Japanese means squid or something. Hang on, let me check. Time to go to my trusty friend Google Translator. And hang on, I also have to do some errands. So... And I'm back. Not that I really left for so long. Anyway, why was I searching up again? Oh yeah, Ika. I was right, Ika in Japanese means squid. Huh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Ah, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reaction aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at the desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey Sayori, I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Of course, of course. Why, why wouldn't it be? I just feel like you're a little bit off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I wordedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at the usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Tony, what's up? Hey, this might be a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayuri, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Tony. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she never, she's never really like this. She always talked to me about things that have bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she, re she was really dismissive. dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important for me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And also, I'm, and I also care about her well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Huh? Are you, sh are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be alone, left alone. Are you sure? Maybe it's just a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her, on her mind is you. Me? How on earth would you come up to that conclusion? 
well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything, anything else, you know. Does she? Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an external light has turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now that she then it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Thorny. Have you ever thought that maybe you've always seen her so cheerful? Because that's how she wanted? Because that's how she is when she's around you? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to worry about it for now. Ah, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but... I already know that I won't be able to get the her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across to the room where Sayuri is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayuri and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quietly that I can't hear her from there. I sigh and sit down. I know Sayuri told me not to worry about her and to have fun but with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like the, I'm the only one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me over the, from over her book. But she looks away quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone to start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's easier for me to do that. I stand up from a desk and I sit, the, I sit in the one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax. You didn't even do anything. But I could tell you were worried. Sorry if my reading is bad this episode. Well, more bad this episode than usual. I could tell you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you able to tell that I was thinking like that? She's probably a psychic or something. Well... It's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who are willing to share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find most comfort in keeping them to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's not really big of, that big of a deal. I was just feeling a little uneasy about Sayuri. Sayuri? Yeah, she's a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something has happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Huh? Sorry, I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that i didn't want you to misunderstand Sayuri and i have been friends for a long time that's all i see then perhaps it's unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings or maybe i'm just reading it into it a little too much Tony, the world is full of meaning often hidden deep beneath the plane of sight the plain sight and there are many untold mysteries behind every person no matter how well you know them you may know them that is true Ah, so you think that, they may, that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed a strange behavior today too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was always fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well... I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. And he suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I advert a glaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold, even to themselves. And you... As someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That's... I think, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you 
feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty simple guy. I like games, watching YouTube, and that's basically my everyday. <laughs> so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I mean, I'm not merely sophisticated as you. <laughs> that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it, yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay everyone, after some time passes, Monica calls out to the club. Why don't we share our poems now? So we don't have another moment with Yuri or anything, we just read, that's it? You're only gonna do me like that game? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make on contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayuri. Okay, let's share our poem with Sayuri first. It's nice, I guess. Come on. I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Huh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Thorny. Sayuri? Is there something wrong? Huh? No, no nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? We can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm going to go home a little bit earlier today. Sayuri? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything, Sayuri cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. I guess she's so Natsuki. Yeah, no thanks. Huh? You didn't even. Next. Jeez, why is everyone so mean these days? I guess Sayuri. Tony? Your writing has only improved in the last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of a spectacular. Short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. I've only been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really setting a good example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad that I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought I would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you were so good at something and you've never really shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiles sadly. Tony, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I've always had books with me. I could always say I really enjoyed reading. Well, that's one way to put it. Anyway, but books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make really good friend. A really good friend. Cheerful people. Always put a smile on your face or deep thinkers and problem solvers discover their mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And... And they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Thorny. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. I know I can do it with them as read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing with you. That I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Thorny. 
I speak too slowly. I seek against myself all the time. I read too deeply into thoughts. But every time, you've always studied me just like everyone else. I mean anyone else. I so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk with you, to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treated you how do you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping that I would make friends, and I would say at least that, I, and I would say I've at least had one success, wouldn't you? Um, if you'd put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to share your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Ghost Under the Light Part 2 There's a part 2? The tendencies of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow Bathing in the distance a blue gleam light figures A lone figure crosses its path A silhouette obstructing the eerie glow My heart pounds The silhouette glows Closer, closer I open my umbrella Casting the shadow to the shield me from visibility but I am too late he steps into the street light I gasp and drop my umbrella the light flickers my heart pounds he raises his arm time stops the only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his upstretched arm the flickering light is in a rhythm and rhythm with the pounding of my heart tensing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warm before? Giving up on understanding, a laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand, the flickering stops. The ghost, the ghost of blue green. My heart is amber. I knew she liked me. Finishing the poem, I stay. I start to hand it back to Yuri. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? <laughs> no, of course not. I just don't really know what, how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it was hard to figure out this, what this one was about. I don't know how I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Yuri's having even a harder time to speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So thank you. I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge from Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead Yuri gently takes my hand and pushes him and pushes him back towards me. I hesitate in response to a warm touch. You can, um, the poem is. Once again, Yuri fails to complete her sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Yuri again faintly smiles as if she doesn't want me to notice. You always, you always make me feel nice. I know I'm, I'm not good with people, but I hope that I could return the favor sometimes. I wonder what she means by that. I actually do, cause I don't know. Yeah, don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back towards me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. <laughs> but I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat so I can put the poem a poem away. And last but not least, Monica again. Hi Thorny. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform to the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I guess I'll have to give it some thought. Some more thought. Okay, no pleasure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see... <laughs> anyway, let's talk about today's poem. I mean, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Your style has gotten it. So refined, Tony. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well... I okay, guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her saying more words 
These past couple days then she's talked in the whole year. I'm not sure I did it but that's pretty impressive. Well she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head I guess. I'm still getting a hang of it myself. You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's awfully suspicious you know. Spending time, spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading the every edgy novel with her. Well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socialing. Which makes me want to make sure that she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know? Alright, alright, I get you. Just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could really be hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality. They're like a bandage. You say that I'm going to hurt her? Sorry, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you, alright? Uh, alright. The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders the earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And I am here. A feather, lost the drift, the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with a little hope, knowing that the legend, knowing the legend don't exist. The legends, day after I, day after day I search, I search with a little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But whenever, but when all else has failed me, all the others have turned away. The legend is all that remains. The last dumb star glimmering in the toilet sky, in the toilet sky, until one day, the wind ceases, it ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and I, and fall, and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless, but her hand catches me between her thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything, knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose. And we only, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, her legend does not exist. And with her breath, she blows me back afloat and I pick up a gust of wind. You know? I feel like I'm learning and looking for answers or the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so I, that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in this club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. I think she's talking about us again. <laughs>
That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is this mood so weird? Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri is immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is going to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always lightens up the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Nice kid, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and she went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously. Of all the times not to go home with you, you pick the time when she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayuri. And second, she's kind of being... She's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh. The curious expression coming from Yuri of all pe from all people of all people? Calm down guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the physical pre pre preparation, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Nasuke will be making cupcakes. But we need a lot of them. And different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, Yuri, you can. Uh, um. Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I. I'm useless. Oh, that's not at all. It at all. You're a talented, talented person here, you know. Now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can't tell. Even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, uh, maybe that that may be the case. But if I can also be a leader on my own, then I want then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri. I mean, you have a beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to upset the atm atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at the desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. It will be wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Thorny. The one who's truly useless. Ah, uh, don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give if you go away to give them give one of them a hand. You could always help out me. I mean you could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, uh, that's Is Monica suggesting that I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth am I supposed to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there are always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica is going. Monica is going to give me a choice, and you should be sitting. And you shouldn't be sitting in a pad anyway. Natsuki, Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, I, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Thorny may not like to be around you if you only make him out to be an a nuisance so therefore he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations hold on i never said that how hard could it be to make of your de decorations anyway sounds more like an excuse you just making excuses for thorny to what are you saying it will be extremely meticulous work and baking isn't just what do you think Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to, to Thorny to decide how we'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten a ch the chance to spend time with me yet, you know. So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Thorny, you're okay with us, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, 
Of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks at me, looks steady, straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with Sayuri, because she's my friend. And if it's going to be with anyone, then I prefer helping Sayuri. I mean, we are the neighbors, and but Monica said, Monica said that Sayuri was helping her. Jeez, did they hate us that much? No. Sorry, I didn't mean this to be difficult. I just think of the club, okay? Uh, let's choose Monica. The well, I guess I should be helping Monica. Yeah, you picked me. Hold on a second. Yeah, Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of us all. Uh, but I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Tony was the one who, uh, that doesn't matter. You're the only one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let an anterior moat, an ulterior mo motive interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the only ones with ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, you know? We won't do as good as a job if you make us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we want to event, if we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriate distribute our resources. Um, uh, so you're going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. <sighs> it's technically most logical that Tony, for Tony to help one of the two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. In the end, I only read the daily two choices, but obviously I'm going with Yuri. Well, I'll probably be the most useful out. Most useful helping out Yuri. N me? Are you serious? Why would you, Natsuki? I can really tell you about to say something mean. N no, I was just saying. Uh. So you'll be helping out Yuri then? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a better habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, you'll be able to handle the baking yourself. I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that's about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to the to little bit. Do you feel the same way, Tony? Me? I guess you could say I'm interested in interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No. That's not what I meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Tony picked me. And also, your cupcake cupcakes are the best cupcakes I ever had. They go really well with my tea, and nothing that I do to the, for the event can will compare to that. So, so I get it. I get it. I'm kind of surprised though. Why? Um. Well, I'm the one acting mature. I didn't know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know. I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I say something bad. Is Yanatsuki isn't the only one surprised? Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. She already has trouble with words. Trying to cheer someone up must be far out of a comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was starting to sound like Sayuri. Even if it didn't work out work perfectly, I can tell she tried to say something Sayuri would say at a time like this. Because Sayuri always helps out, helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciate it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I am going to say this. Hmm? You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Ah, uh, I believe you. Yeah, I have to see everyone doing their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. 
everyone packs their things. I start to follow Magnaka and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, huh? I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I have no, don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Ah, uh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes? Alright then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that would I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. I suppose that makes sense, but if you don't mind, I think I'd prefer going to your house. Alright, in that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to place Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter either way, matter much either way. So I'll just need to make my room as clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not really as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Thorny. I think that we'd make a, a very productive team. Even if you choose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose you. I chose to help you out because that's what I want to do. But Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Huh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I really thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took a tremendous if this effort, Yuri finally sees that and, rela and relaxes her expression. I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to come to my house on Sunday. Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayuri, my anxiety still shoots the roof. Shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. How do I feel so nervous that Sayuri finds out if Sayuri finds out about this? It's not like that we're it's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. I'll just go with it, then I'll have a good time. And I think that's a place, uh, that's a good way to end the video. It's already Sunday. No it isn't, it's the end of the video.